Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a fun video for you and I thought I'd take you along on my journey to reorganizing and moving around my garden studio. It's such a great space and I absolutely love it. This is where obviously I have my sun mural in the background but it's time for a change. When I moved in here a couple of years ago, I just kind of moved in the furniture that was I already had from my previous house and it didn't really function well with the space. Now a couple of years in and also just wanting to create a better working environment for myself, I cut a lot of my sewing patterns on the floor, which isn't great on my knees. So I really want to create a cutting table for myself. Now, you guys might have seen me mention this on Instagram already, or maybe you've seen this floating around on Pinterest, but there's a really awesome IKEA hack with the Kallax Cube units. They are going to be the foundation for my new cutting table. So I thought I would bring you along for the journey, film how I am making the Kallax unit sewing table. So if anyone else wants to do this, they can hopefully watch this video and be able to do it themselves. And then also the organization of my sewing room. And then I'll do like a little tour at the end of this video. So if you're interested in seeing my studio come together, then yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. I do lots of sewing vlogs and tutorials and Cricut videos and that kind of thing. So I hope you stick around. Let's get started. So at the moment I've crowned in these cube units. I'm going to take them out um, outside in a second just so I've got more space. And then I've been using this kind of like L shape for my desk situation for a while now. I'm filming most of my videos on this small table and it's just not, it's just not cutting it for me. Um, obviously it looks very messy to you guys and I'm sure you can be, you're probably thinking, whoa, oh my god. But it's all like organised piles of stuff and I just cannot wait to get more stuff in these cube units of storage and just open up the space a little bit more and have it a little bit more clean. So here's a look at what my studio is looking like and I use these bits of dotted paper from my planner to make the sort of elements of my room that I'll need inside so what I'm going to be doing this is the Kallax unit so there's three Kallax square units they're 77 by 77 and then the measurements in total is 123 by 82 um, and I have the bits of wood which I'll show you in a second and I'll move on to the actual making of this shortly. I'll also have the contents at the bottom of the screen so if you are just watching this video to see how to make this then make sure to step away and head towards that section but for now I just thought I'd show you the plan of my room. So I'm intending on keeping one of these desks so I'm going to actually move my desk to here. So if we're looking at my room like this, this is the sun mural wall this is this wall that I currently have and then this long wall is this wall that silver unit here mannequin and then the Kallax table is going to be on wheels so when I'm not using it it will sit up against the wall like that and then obviously when I need to use my um, sun mural for like a photo background it can be moved out the way I can turn it around that way I can Put a tripod on one side and film and everything like that so it's meant to be a functional uh, table that can be moved around a room so perfect for this because i have wooden floors as well so it'll move around quite nicely Keeping it real, this is the carnage. <laughs> oh god, it's always so much worse before it gets better. Hello, I'm back in the studio. It's kind of slowly coming together since the last time you saw. It's been a few days and I'm back in here to organise things. So my desk is now on this side, but I will do a finished tour at the end of the video. So I'm now going to move on to the part of the video showing you the IKEA Kallax sewing pattern table hack or cutting table hack. And I'm hoping that with my video, you can go away and make it yourselves and you'll have a clear understanding of how to make it. Kallax uh, cube units are so straightforward to build. 
here are the three put together. I'm going to turn the camera around so it won't be my face, it'll be, it'll be me talking but I'll talk you through the elements of the table and everything I mentioned will be linked in the description box below so you can go and purchase for yourself. So we have the Calac units built here and I've just sort of pushed them together so we've got three in total and they're all built with my own bare hands may I add. So this is me standing at the other end of the studio. We've got all three built and as you can see I've got the side with the um, screws facing upwards and then obviously the other side of the screws is, is on the other side so that these tops usually you'd have it so these were on the side and this would be the top but because we've got two bits of wood that's going to make up the base and the top of the table I want to hide these screws so then in terms of the bits of wood you might be wondering what cut type of wood to use I've got this MDF sheeting and my dad took me to a kind of wood yard um, to get it cut to size. B&Q I think do it as well if you're in the UK. B&Q do um, woods like this that you can get cut to size as well. And then the sizing, um, we've got the top which is 86 centimetres by 121 centimetres. I wanted it big enough that I could fit an A0 cutting mat on it. And then the base is 78 centimetres by 117 centimetres. So the base, I basically measured what the outer edge of the three Calax units together would be. So you want to measure this length and then this. And because there's a slight overlap, you'll see, by about half a centimetre on each side. So what I did is I actually added a centimetre all the way around for this so the base will be the exact size that we need without any overhang and then we also have these wheel casters so these are to go on the bottom of the base and will obviously mean that I can wheel the table around if I need to but there's also locks on them but that is again your own preference you can just have the Calax units on the floor with a base. It's quite a nice height. I'd say when, once I've got the wheels on it and it's a little bit higher, it's gonna be perfect for cutting uh, projects on and stuff. In terms of the screws, I am a, a novice to say the least. Um, I've never made a table before guys, so this is all new to me. So my dad is actually coming round shortly to help me. Hopefully we'll get it done. Here's today. my dad everyone. So he's come here to save the day. <laughs> um, so we're gonna put the base on. Um, I made a bit of a booby. I don't have the right screws. So what I recommend, you need to measure this side bit and then the wood that you've got. And all together, I need to actually have 50 millimeter screws and I don't have them. I have 75 millimeter. Um, so look, so essentially it's gonna come up through there to the top and it's way too long at the top. So we need 50 millimeter screws, which I'll link below. Um, I've just ordered some. These ones were too small, but they're okay to use for the base. So my dad's going to do the base for me today and then screw these side pieces together. So where the units join up, a screw oh, is going to go. Take it out in the garden. Okay. And um, the screws go in the side. Easy. So I've got this spare piece of wood that my dad's just going to lay it on just to not mark the uh, cabinets. And we're going to make a start. So it goes one like that. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So one like that, and, that, and then yeah. the other one. Sure. There's already holes on one part, so I think it's going to utilise the holes that already come with the IKEA furniture. These are the ones that attach it to the wall if you need to. He's going to use that to screw it there on the side, um, and then the channel. same with the other one. Yeah. And when you screw it together, if you put it on a flat surface, <laughs> you ensure everything is flat all yeah. the way around. Yeah. A piece of ply is made really. F that's marine grey ply. Mhm. Mm that's what you're using. Oh, okay. Come first. Okay. So the trouble is that you've got, you have got a slight gap there. But that's fine because yeah. it needs to have that because there's overlap on both sides. Yeah. So you will have that on yeah, both sides. What, what, that's what okay. What you'll end up seeing, mm -hmm. even though you know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a homemade unit, in there, you'll see a bit of screw. So my dad's saying he's using these holes that were already existing, but he's got to drill, drill all the way you through. You don't have it. to, but it just makes the screwdriver work better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So my dad's also going to drill these two bottom ones. They were already Done. in the, the unit.
Um, just an FYI, we're actually not going to put any screws in the centre point just because the in inside of the unit is a lot thinner than the outside bits, um, so it will just split the wood. There's so yeah, there's a risk of splitting. The top the and the bottom will hold those in place anyway, yeah. but well, obviously we've got it secure on the side bit. I was doing it to belt and brace, but you don't. It's, yeah, it's okay. It's too, it's All too, good. Too risky. So yeah. So anyway, this bit is together. Dad's just doing the other side, and then we'll put these two bits together at the side here. The actual unit is together now, isn't it? It's all drilled together. And now the base is on. Um, did you say the base could have been ever so slightly bigger, did you say? Maybe a couple of more mil, but I think once it's up it was, like, yeah, you know, just over, it's... overhang it. So my dad's just using some packing tape just to hold it in place. It's obviously actually... obviously you could use clamps if you have clamps. I'd probably use clamps, but you haven't got But any. I don't have any clamps, so makeshift. And <laughs> we're just using some tape to hold it. And then my dad's gonna drill the base onto it. So one screw will be the long screw that will go through to the unit and then the other ones will be the regular screws from the wheel box to hold on the wheel. The wheels are now on, the base of the unit is on and the unit is all put together. So now the next step is to turn it round. But yeah, it's looking good. My dad's did a couple of, my dad's done a couple of um, reinforcement screws into the unit as well. So overall it should be really sturdy. I'm ready to turn over so yeah. Hi guys, I'm back in the studio and you'll have to forgive the red face. It is a boiling hot day here and I've just finished putting together my studio and I say finished loosely because there's always like niggly things that need sorting and organising and things like that but I feel like that comes like as you're using it but fundamentally everything is in its place and I'm very excited. So I thought I'd end this video showing you details of the organisation, what items I'm using, what products I'm using and kind of bits and bobs and where I've put things. I get asked a lot for a studio tour so that's exactly what the end of this video is going to be. I'll also show you the finished Kallax sewing table and how that all came together and what it's looking like. My dad finished uh, the tabletop yesterday by drilling it all together and putting the topper on. I'm still yet to decide if I want to paint the top or maybe vinyl it. I've had a few suggestions, people saying like put fabric on there, but I know fabric will just get marked and um, it'll get torn or it'll get cut by accident. So I think I'm, I'm edging towards putting a vinyl topper onto it. I think paint might get scratched over time and it might um, not be as hard wearing, but a vinyl might be quite a good way to go um, it's a bit smoother as well so So first up, let's talk about this new unit that I have. I wanted a storage shelf that was like open and didn't have a back to it just to kind of make it feel a bit lighter and a bit airier in here. I got this wooden one from Wix. It was pretty cheap and cheerful. It was only £40 for a five shelving unit. And I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit on the wobbly side. But if you're not putting anything too heavy on there, things like paper patterns and craft materials then I think it's ideal and you can also uh, screw it to the wall if you want to as well so I absolutely love it I then painted it in Lick 09 blue paint it's the same paint from my mural I had a whole tin of paint left so I used that and I think it's so cute because it matches my Cricut machine. Let's go through the details then, organisation. I know these are a required taste, but I love Blythe dolls. And if I could afford to, I'd have lots in my collection. And then I've got pictures of my friends and family. I've got one there that's going to go on the wall of my nan and my mum. And some gorgeous little bits and bobs. And then I've got this pink filer storage thing that I got from Amazon. I'll link everything that I mentioned that I'm able to in the description box. And then paper patterns, these are sewing patterns and the are uh, normal sort of like non-bend um, envelopes 
and I'm going to do a separate video soon on how to organise these properly because I'm due uh, organisational video of my sewing pattern so watch out for that one and then I love 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 these colourful plastic crates for storing things this one is going to be for like small paper envelopes things that are like patterns that are in my wish list to make in the next few months kind of thing will go in there and because I've got like literally probably five or six times the amount of patterns as this it's crazy but they're all in my sort of storage space which is in a little room next to the studio but for now I try and keep the patterns that I make on repeat and are kind of new patterns here and this is how I'm going to organize them so this little lilac plastic crate is from Primark and it was three pounds I'll link some similar ones below for you if you don't have a Primark near you or something and you want to get them and um, they do loads on Amazon so I'll link those below I've then uh, framed one of my little prints uh, this is available in my postcards on Etsy if you'd like to get them and I just framed one and then I've got this really cute little planter behind just to make it nice and decorative and then we're moving on to my Etsy products so if you didn't already know then I sell stuff on Etsy and here are some of the um, stock items that I have ready made up I have a whole uh, bin in a minute I'll show you of a uh, product that I need to make up but this is when they're all packaged they all go into here and um, it's pretty relatively organized this one doesn't look too organized but it's because they're like little ones but I have like buttons and woven labels and they're all sort of in there so and then going down here there's bits and bobs I still need to um, sort out but I've got my Cricut jewelry machine and then I've got like my paints and art materials so I've got like fabric paints and um, paints in there, sketchbook which is like how sometimes I'll go back to pen and paper and just sort of sketch out my ideas and then I have a, an assortment of different pens and paints, I've got pilot pens, fabric pens, markers, you name it, it's in there, paints, watercolours and like these little plastic things for paints and then I got my a couple of uh, loose embroidery hoops I just had laying around just to keep them tidy and then right at the bottom I've got some Cricut vinyl so I got this bin this is like a food storage bin that I just put um, vinyls in it's a really good size and then these ones are from Amazon as well but I found this one was cheaper than this one depends what look you're going for I suppose and next to it I just got bits and bobs that are still needing sorting so I do have this Scadis unit from Ikea and all the sort of accessories that go with it so if you want to see a separate video on that I'm happy to film a separate video on like organising it for a sewing room let me know but the Cricut on it is the same I had this in here already and it's got like packing packing materials and envelopes and postcards and scrap vinyl um, I try and keep all my scraps um, so they're all in there and, and then over on my desk obviously I've tried to keep it quite clean so I've only got the one desk here to work on now so I want to keep it as minimal as possible and I've just got my overlocker it's an old one that my nan gave me so definitely do an update when I can afford it and then my Janome DKS100 my pride and joy and then I'll just keep bits and bobs over here like pens, scissors and things and when I've got my Ikea scallop Scalix, I think it's called or Scadis on the wall he's gonna have like scissors and stuff all hung up and it will be a lot neater moving on to this side of the studio so obviously we have the Ikea Calyx sewing table and this hack was so amazing and it literally makes me so 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 happy to have this in my studio I don't have to cut projects on the floor anymore and yeah I'm just really really happy with it um, obviously I've got this cutting mat this is just an A2 one I'm gonna get an A uh, a1 size I think I was going to get one for the whole table but I actually quite like the fact um, I can have half and half and I have this this is, used to be a nappy caddy for my daughter and had like baby stuff in it and when I no longer needed it for her I'd now use it for <laughs> putting random things in like uh, at the end of the day if I'm still working on a project and I want to take it to the house because my house is down there um, I can just put things in there and take it with me so it's kind of like a nice little way of taking things to and fro the studio I've got this folder that I'm working on this is going to be a sewing organizer so I'm actually launching my own printable organizer so watch out for that um, so I've got a nice uh, folder to put it in just like notebooks and things lots of bits and bobs and then I'm using these cube units to store things in so we've got on this side just like random craft materials like glue guns that sort of stuff elastics Cricut Joy materials, um, felts and fabric glue and stuff like that. My Easy Press 
Then around here, I've got a fabric bin. This is fabrics that I want to use hopefully this summer. All my Etsy products that I still need to package up. Craft materials, ribbons, trims, that kind of thing. Interfacing. And then around here, kind of hidden, but I like the fact this messy side is hidden. Um, I've got all the bits that I, when I'm at my cutting table and I'll need things like the rotary cutter, scissors, pins, clips, that kind of thing's all there. The rulers, just yeah, like handy bits and bobs that are needed here. Surplus of sewing patterns, they end up just getting everywhere because I've got so many. But yeah, so that's that. And then just like pens and other things like planner materials. And then my beautiful mannequin, this mannequin is from John Lewis and I think I got a medium one um, and yeah it's beautiful, I'm currently working on a heather blazer so there's that and then this basket bag which my friend got me for my birthday I'm going to use it for um, projects that I'm currently working on or things that need fixing and then this trolley, this trolley is from Hobbycraft and inside it is lots of other sort of sewing haberdashery and notions that I need so sewing needles this box William Morris box is from John Lewis um little sewing bag I'm not sure where this is from my friend one of my friends got me this which is so cute a box of buttons and labels a box of threads which I'm hoping to um organize and get some threads out so I can see them and have them all pretty on the wall and then I've just got like a book cleaning stuff uh cables and whatnot so that is it you guys, that is the end of my sewing room and my craft room tour and the organisation of it all. Oh my god it's been a project. <laughs> Being a mum I can't just like dedicate endless time into doing things and obviously the time that I do have is spent working so I have been out here slogging away in the evenings and just whenever I can. So yeah, it's it's been a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm just so thankful for my dad for helping me build the unit. I built this all myself today and painted it myself today. So I'm pretty proud of myself. It's come together really, really well. And I hope you enjoyed seeing the process and seeing everything that goes on in my studio. I know I'm very, very privileged to have this space and it's definitely something that I have to work towards and I'm just so grateful every day to have this space. It's like my happy place. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this little part of myself and seeing more about my studio. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you are wanting to do now in your studio that you've liked from this one. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.